good evening, family. Thank you again for joining us for The Word on Wednesday. I am excited about God's Word. I, I hope and pray that you're excited about God word, God's Word because I know God's Word makes a difference. And through God's Word, we become what God desires us to be. We learn what God wants us to know. And we use the word to order our steps and to give us guidance. So I'm excited about what God wants to share tonight. Uh, we're going to be looking at Psalms 26 for the next couple of weeks. And uh, we're going to be looking at uh, David's integrity, walking in integrity and what David was experienced. So I'm excited to join together tonight and uh, let's get into the word of God. Let's pray. Eternal God, we are grateful for this time of teaching. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that will move us, motivate us, and guide us and show us the way. God, thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, beloved. Thank God for you tonight. Uh, let's get into God's word tonight. We're going to be looking at uh, Psalms 26, Psalms 26, uh, tonight uh, we'll be using the New King James Version as we share uh, scripture with you. Uh, we're talking again about walking in integrity, David, uh, David's life, what was going on and how David was walking in, in integrity, but the things that were happening because of his integrity. Uh, one great thing I found is uh, what John Calvin said, uh, no greater injury can be inflicted upon men than to wound their reputation. No greater injury can be inflicted upon men that to wound their reputation than to wound their reputation. Oh my God, my God. The one that says, see, John says, John Calvin says, the greatest injury is when we wound someone's reputation. And because when you wound a reputation, it's hard to get your reputation back when your reputation has been wounded. Uh, people will do things and say things to try to take you down through your reputation. And so David is dealing with that. And we want to look at that tonight and, and see what how David handled it. And, and I'm praying that as we look at how David handled uh, what was going on, that we can use those things uh, for us when we experience uh, our integrity being challenged or our integrity being lied on. And, I, and I'll tell you, I, I've gone through this before myself, uh, reputation being being. Uh, Kid and and your uh, integrity being questioned and lies being and, and so it's not unusual. I, I want to let you know it's not unusual for someone to try to wound you through your reputation. All right, let's look at this tonight. Those who live godly lives can expect to receive persecution in this world. Often this occurs in the form of a verbal attack by unbelievers. Let me clarify something here. I've experienced it through people who call themselves believers also. So I know I've put down through unbelievers, but you know what? There are some folks who claim to be believers that will do the same thing. When attacked, Believers must be certain that the persecution comes because of their commitment to the Lord, not because of some personal, personal flaw. David experienced this as he reigned as the king of Israel. False charges called into question his ability to lead the nation, challenging his spiritual fitness to approach God in the kingdom. What is worse, these charges against David were brought by deceitful men and hypocrites who were bloodthirsty, seeking the abdication and death. They would stop at nothing, even resorting to bribery to bring about the king's downfall. The goal was to destroy David and bring him down. 
that's the goal of those who who try to uh, bring down your uh, pull down your reputation try to uh, talk about your integrity those who will lie on you those who who will set you up those who would do whatever is necessary that the bottom line is is that they're trying to bring you down I, I know that may sound unusual for some of you who may be watching but I'm here to tell you when you start living for Christ and when you are living for Christ when you're following God in your life when you're standing on the principles of God and you and, and your life is changing there are folks who don't want to see you move that way and there are folks who will be jealous, folks who will lie on you, folks who will, will, will bring about things. They will do whatever necessary to bring you down. And that's what David is dealing with tonight. The bottom line was that they were trying to take him out. They were trying to bring him down. So they began to have his integrity questioned. Oh, my God, my God. That is the key. That's the key. When you, when your integrity is questioned, when someone begins to start a rumor about you, when someone begins to lie on you, when some people will, will uh, 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 bribe other folks to lie on you, uh, not because uh, of anything else other than your stand for God and your living for God, that that's the key. When you are living for God, doing the things for God, people will will question your reputation, they will lie on you, they will bring you down through your integrity or bring you down uh, your reputation, and then your, your integrity is questioned, okay? Now, now I want to clarify, it doesn't matter what role you play. Uh, it's not just from the pastor and those who are in leadership. Yeah, just a, just, just a regular, uh, everyday person who's walking with God, uh, people will do that to you. And so David is dealing with that tonight, and we want to get into that. Uh, the first thing David does, he, he has a prayer of vindication. You see, in the face, in the face of such personal attacks, David's dealing with these personal attacks. David goes to the house of God to focus on the glory of God. Oh, yeah, now, now let me say it again. In the face of personal attacks, David goes to the house of God. He goes to the house of God. He goes to church to focus on the glory of God and to, to appeal for God's defense. Now look at that. David goes to the house of God. He goes, he goes to the temple. He goes to the church. He says, God, I, I'm, I'm first here. I'm, I'm, I'm here to focus on the glory of God. Now, now, here's what I, I figured out in my life and walking. Times where I've, I've been, uh, someone's trying to ruin me or bring me down. The first thing I had to get my mind focused on, the glory of God. Because what I realized, if I stoop to their level, then I lose. So I had to go, I had to get into my own secret closet and begin just to focus on the glory of God. Now, this is a tip for you. This is a tip for you, those who are tuned in tonight. When, when, you, when your reputation is questioned, when someone goes against you trying to bring you down, the first thing we have to learn to do is seek God. Go to the house of God or go into your secret closet and begin to focus on the glory of God. Oh, yeah. See, I, I, yeah, I had to change my, my focus for a second. Here. I, I had to begin to think about the glory of God. Then when I began to think about the glory of God, then I began to realize who God was and what God was going to do. The glory, thinking about the glory of God, not just God, is his gloriness and his glorification of God. But, but what's the song? When I think about the goodness of God and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. I had to begin to think about the glory of God, the manifestation of God in my life. And that's what they, they begin to focus on the glory of God and to appeal for God's defense. Now, I think one of the reasons he went to the, to focus, he went to the house of God because he knew the spirit of God was there. And when you, and see, there's something about the church for folks, something about the, 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 the presence of the Holy Spirit in the church that brings, that ought to bring some calmness and some clarity. And likewise, your house ought to be like that. Your house ought to be your 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 sanctuary. 
when you can't make it to the church building, God ought to be where you are. And so you begin to just spend some time going to a corner, going to a, a private place and begin to think about the glory of God as you're going through what you're going through. And then he begins to appeal for God's defense. Let's see that. Look, look. He, he begins to, 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 to focus on the glory of God. And in the midst of his worship, in the midst of his focus, he appeals for God's defense. God, be a fence all around me. God, protect me. God, show me the way. God, do what you got to do, God, because I know this is not true. God, I'm depending on you, God. But now notice what he does. He focuses on the glory of God first. And then he appeals for God's defense. Oh yeah, so that's that's a tip there. That's a tip. That's a tip for you. You got to sometimes just you got to calm yourself and just just focus on the glory of God. All right, let's let's move on here. Let's move on here because I I want to share something. He has a prayer of vindication. Look what he says. Vindicate me, O Lord. This is. Uh, Psalms 26, verse first, the first verse, verse number one, vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. Now notice here, this Psalm begins with David's cry of, of, of exhortation or exoneration, excuse me, exoneration, David's exoneration. He cries out for exoneration. He says, look, vindicate me. Vindicate me, O Lord. What, what does that mean, Pastor? It means judge me. He's asking, uh, judge me in order to prove my innocence. He says, judge me. He says, judge me to prove my innocence of these false accusations who are made by my foes, made by my enemies. That's what he says. Vindicate me, O Lord. Judge me. Lord, you judge me in order to prove my innocence of these false charges, these false accusations, accusations made by my foes, my enemies. He says, he says, vindicate, prove, prove me, judge me. Because David is convinced that he has led a blameless life of moral integrity. He says, I've led a blameless life of moral integrity. Let me explain exactly what he's saying. The blameless, blameless simply means the sincerity of purpose and single-hearted devotion. That's what's characterized his life. And in fact, you, you've learned, hopefully you've learned, that David was, 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 was a man after God's own heart. David's his sincerity of purpose. In other words, my, what my purpose is, I, I'm so committed to what my purpose is. And he had a single-hearted devotion that had characterized his life. My, my heart belongs to you, God. My heart belongs to you. I, I'm sincere in my purpose. And so that's what he said. He says, it's not that I'm, I'm, I'm not sinless. Oh, I've got sin. I'm not, my sinless perfection, I don't have a sinless perfection. I fall short, David is saying. But he claimed innocent of the charges. He says, I'm innocent of these charges. I've lived beyond reproach. And he knew the rumors and charges were untrue. So, so David says, vindicate me, O oh God. See, see, David says his, his life flowed from the fact that he had trusted in the Lord without wavering. That's the key. Trusting in the Lord without wavering. In everything David was doing, he said, I trust him without wavering. So he's gone to the sanctuary. He's gone to the church. And he's appealed to heaven for God's final verdict. God, vindicate me. Judge me, because here's what here's what David is saying, beloved. It only matters, God, what you think. It only matters what you think. You have the last say so. You vindicate me because it really doesn't matter what anybody else is saying. It only matters what you say, God. And so he says, I've lived this life. I've been sincere, I've been, my purpose, my following you without, I, I, I've been with you without wavering, without thinking about, maybe I need to turn around, maybe I need to do this. 
I've done everything I was supposed to do, God. These rumors are not true. They're trying to take me out. They're lying on me. And so, God, I need you to vindicate me. Judge me in order to prove my innocence. Because what you say is the only thing that matters. So, so as David deals with his integrity, being questioned, his reputation, he, he goes to the sanctuary again and, and glories. He, he glories first uh, who God is, and then he asks for defense. And so he says out, the psalm begins with, with, with David's cry of exoneration. Vindicate me, O God. Judge me so you can prove my innocence. Amen. Judge me. Then David, as we go, beginning, we're going to go into verse two and three. Uh, there's a prayer of examination. David, David provides this prayer of examination in these next verses. Look what he says in verse two. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. Verse three, for your loving kindness is before my eyes and I have walked in your truth. Let me go back to verse two. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. Now remember the last verse, he said, Dave says, you know, judge me, judge me so I can prove my innocence. Now notice when he moves into verse, verse two. David invited God's close scrutiny of every aspect of his life. Now, check this out now. David's inviting God to go into his, his life. He said, there's close scrutiny. I invite you, God, to, to closely scrutinize every aspect of my life. Look at every aspect of my life. That's what David said. He said, test me. Try me and examine my heart and my mind. Now notice, notice what he says. He says look, let's go back to the scripture. He says, examine me. He says, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. That's, he's inviting God. Come on, come on in God, God, God. Scrutinize my life. Look at every aspect of my life. Then he says, not only just examine me, he said, but test me, try me, and examine my heart and my mind. That's right. He said, look at the total person of me. Test me, try me, and examine my heart and my mind. Because what David said, he believed that such a spiritual inventory would prove him to be blameless. Now check that out now. Look, look. He says, God, if you look at all of it, I believe, because I know the life I've walked, the life I've lived, that I'm going to be found blameless. Take a spiritual inventory of my life, and, uh, and it will prove, I'm positive will prove that I'm blameless. Oh, now, now, look, look, look. How many of us can just tell God that? How many of us can just tell God, look, test me, try me, examine my heart and my mind? Take a spiritual inventory of my entire life, God, and I will become blameless. I will be blameless. The spiritual inventory, the spiritual inventory will prove to be blameless. In other words, you won't find me wavering when you, when you do this spiritual inventory of my life. That's what David's saying. I know, I'm confident that through this investigation by God, David is saying, it would clear me and clear him of his enemy's charges. Oh, look, look, that's some confidence. That's confidence. When you, Grandma used to say, when you know that you know that you know that you know that you know. David, that's what I believe David said. When you know that you know that you know that you know that you know, there's no doubt about it. When you look at me, God, search me. Search me, test me, try me, examine my mind, my heart, and you will see through this spiritual inventory that I'm blameless of the charges that are, these charges that are being uh, leveled against me, these rumors, these lies, you will find, God, when you look at my inventory, that you can come back and say, he has not waited. Oh, yeah. He said, said, do this thorough investigation. God, I want you to do this thorough investigation so you can clear me of the enemy's charges. 
Because he said, because the Lord's love. He said, David, David, here's David's, here's David's thing. He said, uh, the Lord's love was always before him. Now notice he said, because the Lord's love was always before me, I followed it. It motivated me to walk continually in the truth of God's word. That's what David said. Because God's love was, was before me, it motivated me. That's what David said. It motivated me to walk continually in the truth of God's word. Now check that out. Because God's love was always before him, it motivated him. Now let me ask you this question. First, do you realize God's love is always before you? And if you do, are you motivated? Does it motivate you to continue walking the truth of God's word? Oh my goodness, my goodness. Now, now this, this, this can be a problem for some people because if you've had a problem understanding what love is, this might be messing you up. Now notice that that's what David, he says, God's love was always before him. And because he knew and saw it and understood it, it motivated him to walk continually in the truth of God's word. That's it. That's it. Do you recognize God's love is always before you? Because if you recognize it, then that should motivate you to walk in the truth of God's word. So, so David, David here, David is dealing with it. He invites God into to have a close scrutiny of every aspect of his life. Because see, David knew what was being said was not true. And so the only way that David could really deal with it, he had to ask God, you clarify and clear it up. All right, let's, let's move on to the next verse. I want to move on to the next verse. Verse four and five. David says, I have not sat with idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. Amen. Look, 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 let me go back. Let me go back and say this real quick. David says, I have not sat with idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. Now look, David here points to his separation from all the practices of sinners as further proof of his innocence. Oh yeah, that, that's, let me say that again. David here points to the separation from all of the practices of sinners as further proof of his innocence. Yes, he does. Let, let's go back. Let me, let me share. He says, I have not sat with the idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. So, so look, look, look what David, David says. Look, he, he's pleaded. David has pleaded. I don't sit with deceitful men. That's, that's what David's saying. I don't sit with deceitful men. So neither he said, did I seek worldly advice from or consort with evildoers? Now, look, let, let me go back here. Let me go back here. He says, I don't sit with deceitful men. Let me say, you've got to be careful of the company you keep. That's David, David said, I've been very conscious about the company I keep. Because, see, I don't want to be guilty by association. <laughs> you, you've got to be careful of the company you keep. You've got to be careful who you're sitting down with. He says, look, I don't sit with everybody. I don't hang around with deceitful people. He said, now look, he said, neither did I see. He said, neither did I seek worldly advice or consort with evil doer. He says, look, I didn't seek advice from, from, from worldly people, from evil doers. I did not seek worldly advice or consult with evil doers. He said, look, I, I don't, you, you, I don't, I didn't ask about advice. I didn't seek advice from evil doers, people who are not right. 
you, you got to be careful. Not only do you have to be careful who you sit with, you got to be careful who you seek advice from. Everybody is not people. You should not seek advice from everybody. He said, I didn't seek worldly advice or consult with evildoers. I said, I said, well, uh, it's the world. These worldly men, let me check with you because you're out in the world. Let me, let me go check with you because I want to know what you think. He said, he said, David says, there is no way, really, this is what David said, there is no way that I identify, check this out, I identify with lifestyles of sin, sinful men. That's the key. Let me ask you a question. Who do you identify with? Whose lifestyle do you identify with? Oh, yeah, yeah. Who, who do you seek advice from? Who are you sitting with? Because, see, those people, if you're sitting with any of those folks, those folks are going to mess up your reputation. And then you can't get out of that reputation simply because you've been hanging with them. Yeah, I, I used to be taught when, when I was little, when I was a little boy, uh, the old folks used to tell me, uh, there's some folks you don't hang around with. Uh, you may think they're okay, but you don't need to hang around those folks because they will ruin, check this out, folks, somebody's going to say, they will ruin your reputation. If you, if, let, let me, can, can I take a little time just come down your aisle the way, the way things used to be? I know you're not this way now, but, but this back in the day. They say, if you hang around with a liar, Folks will think you're going to start lying. If you hang around with a drunk, people will think you're a drunk. And, and it goes on. If you hang around with a thief, they, they're going to associate you with a thief. Now, here's another key. It's, a, uh, it's guilty by associate. If you're with a group of people who rob a store, you had nothing to do with it. You just sitting in the car. But they rob a store and y'all get a getaway, but y'all get caught. You're guilty by what? Association. I, I need to hear it. Hear it. By what? Association. Because you were hanging with that crew. If you hang with somebody and they kill somebody, you're an accessory to the fact. You're guilty by association. And, and so David says, I, since, since I've been so careful, I don't sit with deceitful men. I don't seek their advice. It means what? I'm not calling them and saying, tell me what you think. He says, there is no way that his that he was identified with the lifestyle of sinful sinful men. David testified. Let me, see, let me go back to verse five real quick. Look what he said in verse verse five. I've hated the assembly of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. So what David say? He says, "I have hated the assembly of the wicked." In other words, that's not my lifestyle. That's not my cup of tea. And I will not sit with them. See, 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 when you walk with integrity, beloved, you've got to find finally make a stand. You've got to take a stand. You've got to take a position that this is the, my godly lifestyle. This is the lifestyle that I'm living. This is who I'm following, which is God. And so therefore, I've got to separate myself from certain people because if I don't, then my integrity can be questioned. So, so look, he rejects their sinful ways and detested, detested everything they stood for. Now, okay, okay. Okay, I'm talking about his walking in, walking in integrity now, his reputation. And, and so David, David had taken a stand. David had, has taken a stand about his life long before this happened. And let me share this with you before we close. When you take a stand, when you begin to walk a certain way, when your walk is different, there are unbelievers, and then there are some folks who say they're believers, that will be jealous of you. They will do whatever they have to do to take you down so they can feel better about feeling, feeling bad. Okay? So, so David, David's dealing with walking integrity. He's dealing with these lies that his enemies have come up because the goal is to take him down. And I'm here to tell you before we close, there are folks out there who want to take you down simply because of your walk with God. So David is dealing with it. And so I'm encouraged tonight that if I look at David and seek these things that we're learning, then I can handle when my integrity is questioned.
Oh, we're going we're gonna to continue next week. And we're going to finish this out next week. But I thank God for you tuning in tonight. And I hope this has been a little fire for you to get, get the flame going in your life about you looking at your integrity, your reputation as a Christian. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in again. And connect with somebody and say, come on, jump on and listen to the word of God through, through our pastor. Again, let me thank uh, all our our essential workers, our frontline workers. Thank you so much for what you continue to do. Again, church family, I'm, I'm impressing upon you. I'm, I'm urging you that when you have an opportunity to get your vaccines, get them. We need. I need you to get them. I need you to trust me to get this vaccine because it's for your good. And again, it's the first step for us getting back together uh, in person. But I, I, I believe, regardless, this is going to this is a blessing for your life. This is going to help you. So trust me. Check with your doctor, your physician, if you have underlying conditions, so you can follow what they uh, recommend to you. But other than that, when you get the opportunity, I need you to get it. I need you to get this, and I've led you by being being uh, vaccine uh, vaccinated twice. I mean, I had both shots already. Uh, back in January and the first week in February. So I, I, I'm, I'm impressing upon you, church family, please. Uh, seek God and, and trust him and, and know that if my pastor is doing it, then I, I, I feel a little better that he's taking the lead and he's done it. Amen. God bless you. Thank you again for tuning in for the word on Wednesday. My wife sends her love to all of you. I'm praying for you. I thank God for you. I pray that the best is yet to come. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, but God has in store for you. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, virtually on Sunday and on Wednesday. I mean, on Saturday, we'll have communion Pick up If you need to pick up, come on by, say hi, and pick up some communion. God bless you. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this time. We pray now for blessings upon each hearer of this word. God, we pray now for guidance and for the rest of this week, protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you soon. We love you.